Welcome to the latest in Zelda music and fan theories. You're listening to Hyrule Academy, live on Radio Hyrule. This is me, MZ Gamer, and welcome to Hyrule Academy. It's a wonderful little show right here on Radio Hyrule. We talk all about Zelda lore, fan theories, and listen to some excellent music. We start off tonight's show with In the Greenwood from Hyrule Warriors, which is very fitting because today's show is all about Hyrule Warriors. And it's a little bit weird that we're going to be talking about that game because it's very commonly considered to be non-canon and that is that is the word we try to avoid here on the show non-canon something that's not really officially part of the legend of zelda lore how can we have a discussion about that well the big thing is hyrule warriors it's a huge game and there's a lot to discuss and i'm going to dive into that in just a moment but first of all thank you all for attending welcome to hyrule academy take your seats look under your chairs it's Rupees! Congratulations, you've all won five rupees for attending today. Put those on your invisible rupee tracker, because I'm not keeping track of it. And it's a wonderful time here at the show. I have some excellent discussions for you. Uh, Tonight's show is going to be brought to you by the word cold, because our heater is not functioning at the moment, but we're working on fixing it inside my my studio but uh we're we're okay we're okay we will be we'll be fine i have a, I have a little sweater on i'm gonna be okay it'll be great but we're gonna start talking right now about hyrule warriors and so if you don't know the backstory of this game i'm gonna fill you in get you a little bit going before i start asking you guys the questions so it's a part it's a game of course made by a third party in part An- onuma the director of the legend of Zelda series he came in he he lended a hand where necessary, but it was mostly made by the team that makes Dynasty Warriors. And it's a game that is in an entirely separate dimension of the main series. That's what was said. What does that imply, you may be asking? Well, the essential way we can kind of take it here at Hyrule Academy is that this game is canon. It is an official thing that happens within the Legend of Zelda universe. But it has nothing to do with any of the games that we've played. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, yes, we know this, uh, these other games exist, but w- this is like oh, this is like a whole other world. The way of thinking of it, and how I've kind of like drawn it out, so to speak, is that when you have the the, the, the timeline of the Legend of Zelda series, and it's and you have two two way splits, you know, one leading to the defeated timeline, and then one uh, where Link succeeds that leads to child and adult. I'm sorry if I'm blowing your minds if you're new to the school. This is kind of... I uh, should have re- done the required reading over the summer. Um, <laughs> but okay, so you have that whole Zelda timeline. Wonderful, fantastic. I like to think of Hyrule Warriors as on a separate line. It's just like floating away from all this. It's its own thing. Um, at least that's how I like to think about it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any better ways of thinking about it. Let me know if you have a different implication of what Anuma means when he says it's in a separate dimension. Now, in the game, we give a we get a backstory about Ganondorf. Ganondorf, the great king of evil himself, uh, he is split between four fragments, four evil fragments to seal him away. One is is split. I'm sorry, I missaid that. One is in the Master Sword, sealed by the Master Sword. Master Sword is keeping it safe, and the other three are placed all throughout three specific moments in time and space. And then there's Sia. She is a guardian of the Triforce. She is used by Ganondorf. She opens the Gate of Souls that goes to the Three Moments in Hyrule. And that's when we turn to our heroes. We have to go with all sorts of characters from Legend of Zelda franchise, such as Link, Zelda, Sheik. They go and attempt to beat Sia. They enlist people like Darunia, Agatha, Minden, and Fi from all across these other time and space dimensions. And we find somebody by the name of Lana. Lana is this girl who is apparently part of Sia. Well, was. Ganondorf took the light 
right out of Sia and made a whole new person. And her name is Lana. And so that's why Sia's evil, because we took the light out of her. That makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? So, <laughs> I know it doesn't make much sense. This game's kind of convoluted. Uh, so, we have Sia, evil lady, Lana, nice lady. Sia's helping Ganondorf. And Lana is helping the heroes. Got, got it so far? Were we good? Ganondorf actually ends up breaking free temporarily. And he's about to do some evil stuff. But Sia realizes the error of her ways and gives Link and Zelda their two pieces of the Triforce. The Triforce of Courage and the Triforce of Wisdom. And they lock Ganon away. So, waha! Take that, Ganon. You thought Sia was on your side. But guess what? Through the power of happiness and heroes, you're sealed. But we still defeat Sia because she's a jerk. And so we get rid of Sia. And then Lana takes the Triforce of Power. What the heck? What kind of alternate universe is this? Somebody wielding the Triforce of Power that isn't Ganondorf? What sort of madness is this? Well, Hyrule is restored. The Gate of Souls is closed. We have we have done it, everybody. We have we have, we are successful. Until Ganondorf escapes once more. We don't we like the Master Sword just kind of stops doing its job apparently. And Garyheim and Zant come to join Ganondorf, and using their powers, they take the full Triforce. Ganondorf gets the full Triforce. He turns into Ganon, big pig man, and then he loses. Then he dies. <laughs> And Lana watches over the Triforce because C is dead. And, and, and Ganon is sealed. Okay. <laughs> and there's, that's what happens in Hyrule Warriors, in case you haven't heard the story. So, the big thing is this game features a lot of Triforce passing. Originally, C is watching over it. Then, she has it all. Then, she gives... Two pieces to Link and Zelda. <laughs> then Lana takes the Triforce of Power. Then they use the Triforce and do a whole bunch of things. And then Ganon takes it all. <laughs> and then Lana, 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 Lana takes it. I know, it's, 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 it's Triforce Hot Potato Riking. Riking said it best inside the chat. So, big story. And now I have a couple questions for you. Big, huge, huge story. Why? Or what is the reasoning, even, that Lana or Sia is put in charge of the Triforce? Who appointed them? Wouldn't that be the royal family's duty? Is, hasn't it always been them when the Triforce is safe? They watch over the Triforce under Hylia's watch? That's what the royal crest means, if you haven't ever looked at the royal crest. It's a bird representing Hylia protecting the Triforce. Why is Lana and Sia involved in this at all? And second, Ganon had the full Triforce, but he was still defeated? How is this even possible? You can discuss these questions, answer them for me, give your theories, or if you want to ask me some questions about Hyrule Warriors, and I'll do my best to try to give you my thoughts on them, over at RadioHyrule.com slash chatroom, and I'll feature your messages later on inside the show. But for now, I got an excellent selection of music for you tonight. I got a little bit of Hyrule Warriors in every little segment of the show. And I also got some great remixes and arrangements for some excellent creators all across the internet. So let's get on into it. Thanks for tuning into Hyrule Academy right here on Radio Hyrule. Welcome back to more Hyrule Academy, everybody. I'm MC. And we've been listening to some great music during the break. We listened to first to Dongo Boss Battle from Hyrule Warriors. And then after that, we listened to Song of Storms. And that's a wonderful piano arrangement by Commander Spaceship. Uh, we listened to that inside the first, uh, the 2014 season of Hyrule Academy at one point. And a lot of you guys really liked it, so I decided to bring it back. But you guys weren't talking about the music too much because you guys were heated with tons of theories about Hyrule Warriors. And they're still flying in, so I'm going to keep my little little message to you all a little brief tonight so we can get right back into our discussions. But what I want to talk about is the canonical implications of this game. That's a mouthful and a half. So, we're trying to think about how could this game 
if it's not on a separate line, how does it get inside the, that timeline? Or even if it is a separate dimension, a separate timeline, how does it interact with it? Is it important for us to know as we go into the future of our theories? Should we know that Sia and Lana are part of Hyrule and they watched over the balance of the Triforce? Is this something that they that's important to us as, as, as Zelda theorists? Well, my thing that I really wanted to talk about is how it could fit in. And you guys, you guys mentioned inside the chat uh, while we were uh, on our break that it's very possible that this game can fit inside the timeline. Specifically, following the game Four Swords Adventures. So, in that timeline, the child timeline, we see a number of games. And what's interesting about Hyrule Warriors is it only features timelines, enemies, locations, etc. from games that are on the child timeline or before the child timeline. You see Twilight Princess, Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, and Skyward Sword. Majora's Mask is a little bit less seen, but is seen as uh, with the new DLC came out. So the question is, is it possible to be there? The thing we have to think about is Ganon. Is this a new incarnation of Ganondorf? Because we have seen, and we talked all about it, the second Ganon who appears in Four Swords Adventures. Is it possible that this Ganondorf is the very same and he was sealed underneath the Four Sword? Or is it is, is this something else? Like, what's going on here? Because he was pretty defeated in Four Swords Adventures. How did he come back? Is this the first Ganon? We saw him pretty darn killed inside Twilight Princess. But then again, maybe he came back. So it's a big question of ifs and can it. And the thing is, I don't think we can give answers. It's This game is meant to be not something to think about. That's what Anuma means. But of course, here at the Hyrule Academy, we have to go and stretch our imaginations, even when we're told not to, specifically by the creator of the Legend of Zelda series and the producer and the director and all that. We say no. We must go deeper. And what does it mean for the future of the series? Could there be games where Sia or Lana comes and appears? Yeah. Very possible. We have enough weirdness inside the Legend of Zelda. They could come over from whatever dimension they're in, whether it be by Lost Woods or 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 time shift stones who cares the gates of time or whatever who cares how they get there it's possible it's the legend of zelda anything's possible it's a world of magic will we see something happen again involving that ganon will we see a story where we see his soul split up between four fragments that's something that could happen i think it'd be very interesting if this next zelda game we get has ganondorf in it and you split him up into four pieces and they just leave it like that. They just leave it like that. They're just like, there, he's been split up into four pieces. And they're just like, congratulations, you've won the game. Really? It's setting up for high rewards. It's not going to happen. This is a pipe dream. But I thought it's something that could actually happen. So, I don't know, I just want to share those little mini thoughts with you tonight. Don't think too hard about them. What I want to make sure you guys answer tonight is Ganondorf gets the full Triforce in this game. But he's defeated. How is that? Be sure to answer that question over at RadioHyrule.com slash chatroom or ask me some questions if you want to. I don't mind. But more music, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Hyrule Academy right here on Radio Hyrule. Welcome back, everybody, to Hyrule Academy. I'm MC, and we've been having a fun time into the chat talking all about Hyrule Warriors this evening. But we've been listening to some excellent music on, on in addition. We had some excellent tunes uh, for that wonderful uh, little, little discussion session that we had. Uh, starting off, we had Silent Guardians from Hyrule Warriors. Of course, Silent Guardians, one of my all-time favorite songs from that game. The the chorus really brings it home. Really intense. Great battle music. Um, but I got, I got another Hyrule Warriors song later on tonight that I think I, I like even better. Which I know, Silent Guardians not being my favorite. I know. What a, what a crazy world we live in. After that, we heard I Like Like You. I Like 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 You. I Like 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 You. It, it's supposed to be like... Never mind. 
And it's from Brandon Strider on over on OC Remix. Gotta love that song. Very, very funky and fun. It's a, it's a good time. After that, we heard Milk Bar by Swiggles RP. Swiggles is a great dude. I got the chance to meet him over at MAGFest, and I love that little uh, arrangement he did of Milk Bar, complete with the ah right at the end. Good stuff from Swiggles, as always. So, you guys have been a flutter. A <laughs> flutter chatting up about Hyrule Warriors inside the, in the, inside the Radio Hyrule chat. And you guys got some theories for me. You guys are still going. I'm so sorry that these won't be featured on the show, what you might be saying right now. But here's here's what I got from tonight. So, first of all, why does... Why is Sia slash Lana put in charge of the Triforce or the balance of the Triforce at all? Why isn't it the royal family doing it? That was my first question. Why not the royal family? And so Frosty says, maybe Lana's an ancestor of the royal family. Saying maybe she is part of the royal family. There was nothing said that she wasn't. I think Zelda might have been a little bit more cordial to her. But hey, who am I to, to say? You, is Lana part of the royal family? Hmm. And Sir Quasim says, maybe there isn't a functional royal ha- family inside Hyrule Warriors. We only see Zelda in this game. That's a fair point. While there's a huge castle, and that kind of is indicative of that there's going to be a, a whole royal family... Maybe Zelda doesn't have a lot of help. Maybe Hy- Hyrule's running a little thin on the old family. Maybe maybe we need to start, you know, enlisting some other help out there. Um, so who knows on that. Now, let's talk about this whole thing about Sia looking over the Triforce. Captain Trina, of course, bringing in the quotes. Captain Trina says, The game says, A great sorceress watched over the balance of the Triforce. And yet, she's also described as able to read the fates of all who lived, but never interfering. So, whatever her job is, it required magic, because she was a very powerful sorcerer. She can do some wacky things. And so, uh, Bresh comes in and says, Sia was originally the person who was in charge of maintaining the balance of the Triforce. I should, I should mention... She's watching over the balance of the Triforce, not maintaining. And why is she appointed? Because she's a sorceress. She was probably appointed by the Triforce or the royal family. But like somebody came and said, this is Sia. She's a powerful sorceress and she can understand the Triforce better than anybody else can. Maybe Zelda inside this game isn't as connected to Hylia as other versions of Zelda. That's very much a possibility. So, we have this powerful sorceress, and she's put in charge of it. So, why are we maintaining, or, or I'm not sorry, not maintaining, looking over this balance of the Triforce? C- Captain Trina has a theory. Captain Trina says, Is it possible for one aspect of the Triforce to become more potent than the others, than, uh, if, uh, unless they're kept in check? Well, Sir Quasim says, We know the Triforce does have a mind of its own in the way of the essence of the Triforce. Huh. So it gets you thinking, is the reason we're looking over this thing at all, does the Triforce sometimes get a little restless? Are Din, Nehru, and Ferrari not in perfect balance always? That's kind of a really weird thing to think about. Especially, I don't know, once again, I'm, I'm a very much a Triforce purist. I think the Triforce is all that is perfect in Hyrule. So, why are we looking over the balance? Is it more of just keeping eyes on it? Is it like what Raru does inside Ocarina of Time where he just sits in his little temple of light playing chess with nobody all day? And he just gets, he looks up to the Triforce every now and then. Yeah, but still there. You know, and goes back to playing chess with nobody. Oh, man. No. Raru plays chess with the Triforce. The Triforce. <laughs> that is the Triforce. Raru, you must move my t- my, <laughs> my my pawn to E4. <laughs> That's what the Triforce sounds like. God, why did I do that? I just gave a voice to the Triforce and I was talking about respecting it just a moment ago. <laughs> so, weird theories. Weird theories nonetheless. So, why is this story happening? We have a theory coming in from Yasi Taru says, What if this is the story of Low Rules Triforce? It seems pretty good reason to get rid of it. All this Triforce shuffling. What if this is the story that happens in Lorul? 
I mean, Lowrule is a separate dimension. Could they have not just wanted to not call it Hyrule? Did they want to change their name? Huh. That is the interesting thing. That is the interesting thing, my friends. It could, could, could it be? Uh, that's a Yasi Taru theory of the night. I'm personally not behind it, but I... Uh, it, it, I, I can see it. I guess I can see it. it like, like, I respect it. I respect it. Now, let's talk about Ganon in this game. So, and also, every, every, everybody is, is getting at me about, like, saying, saying that I know, don't know about the essence of the Triforce. I know that the, the, that the Triforce does speak. Holy smokes, you people. Crazies. I mentioned the essence of the Triforce not a moment ago. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, so... Smart Devin comes in and says, This is probably definitely the same Ganon. Near the grand finale of the game, Proxy states that Link is a hero. And Ganondorf replies, You'd be surprised how many heroes I've lived through. And so that's a very strong statement that makes you think this is probably definitely Ganondorf the first, not Ganon 2 from, uh, from, from Four Swords Adventures. Because uh, in case you don't know the story... Uh, Ganon from, from like the first games, he's the same game you see in Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, the Oracle games, and eventually Zelda 1 and Zelda 2. Well, Z Zelda 2, he's dead, but, uh, and A Link Between Worlds, he's dead too. Isn't it fun how many games Ganon is just a corpse in? Isn't it fun? Uh, <laughs> um... So yeah, an interesting little little uh, uh, thing noticed by Smart Devin. So good job on that. Sir Quasim says, I don't think Gan has ever held the full Triforce before, so we really don't know what it does if we can kill him because whenever he gets in other games, it rejects him. Hold it! <laughs> Objection! I would like to mention, folks, that there is a game where Ganon gains the full Triforce. It's called A Link to the Past. Ever hear of it? You know that little chamber with the good music in it? That, that music you heard at the start of the show that goes... Yeah, that one. Yeah. Ganon has the full Triforce. That's his Triforce. He's still killed. So my question at the beginning of the show, can you kill Ganon when he has the full Triforce? was a trick question. I already knew the answer. Yes. We see it on Link to the Past. <laughs> you see, you think Link cares? He's like, I'm going to kill you. But now here comes the question. The question that you guys naturally progress to. Not can you... How do you? How do you? Well, Bresh says, Hylia is connected to the Triforce. Maybe she could make it less powerful, allowing Ganon to be defeated. So, the theory from Bresh is, what if Hylia is just like, hey, let's just tone down the Triforce powers. Now, the only problem I have with this theory, because I mean, hey, sure, why not, is that you're saying that Hylia has more governance over the Triforce than the Golden Goddesses. And that's a hard one for me to stomach, because I'm like, I don't. Hylia is she? She helped look over and and look over the Triforce, and she helped become mortal and all that. But I don't think she's more powerful. So it's just kind of a it's kind of a, a theory I'm not strong on tonight. I'm not strong on that one. But uh, hey, good good on you, Bresh, because that's definitely a unique one. Um, Smart Devin says, has anyone ever entertained the idea that the Master may also ask of a method of countering the Triforce? One ultimate power might have been dangerous. So the Golden Gods created a system of checks and balances. And what you got to remember is the following thing. The Master Sword is created by taking the Sword of Hylia. So Hylia makes this sword. And she is good. Hylia is good. The Triforce of the Golden Goddesses, they don't care about good and evil. They are neutral. They care about balance of power, wisdom, and courage. But Hylia is good. She is inherently good. And she creates this sword, and then you take this sword that's inherently good, and you give it the power of the three golden goddesses using the goddess flames. So, what makes the Master Sword possibly something good to counter the Triforce? It has the power of the golden goddesses, just like the Triforce, but it is inherently good and has this infusion of the golden goddesses' power just the same and highly. So, highly and golden goddesses versus just golden goddesses is just enough to maybe take out this Ganon guy. So that is where my theory stands with that. And you guys were kind of heading in that direction, but I kind of had to kind of seal the deal on that one. 
Uh, you guys have been talking all sorts of stuff. I know Yasi Taru had something I wanted to mention real quick. I didn't get a chance to write it down. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Oh, Yasi Taru, I'm so sorry. You had something good. Oh, I'm so sorry, Yasi Taru. Nope, I, I'm not seeing it right now. I'm not seeing it off the top of my head here. Uh, but that, so, so excellent theories and discussions tonight. Maybe I'll mention something here at the end of the show. But for right now, a little bit more music for you guys. I got two really great songs. First up is a song from a recently released, <laughs> recently released charity album. It's a really good song. I hope you guys really enjoy it. And after that is my favorite song from Higher Warriors. So we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about Higher Warriors after a brief break, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in to Higher Academy right here on Radio Hyrule. And welcome on back. It's been a wonderful evening, folks. We've been listening to some great music here on Hyrule Academy. First up, we heard Ocarina of Time title uh, theme, and that was by Checker Checker. That's his name. I don't know why, why it's his name, but it is. That's how it's going to have to be. And that is from the Operation 1-Up album. I am encouraging each and every one of you to do a Google, go over to one of your favorite musicians. Remember Swiggles RP? I mentioned him earlier in the show. He's part of that. Family Jewels 7X, part of it. Insane in the Rain music. Uh, 8-Bit Brigadier. Thunder Scott. Like a bunch of really cool musicians all worked on this album. A bunch of cool people put some time and love into this album, and it's all for a great cause. A fellow YouTube musician, unfortunately, uh, had to go undergo some medical procedures, and they're trying to help give him some money. I believe it was for a kidney, unfortunately. He had to have a kidney transplant. I, I, I'm i sorry if I'm, I'm butchering the details. A new kidney, yes, it's uh, for, for John. Uh, so he was a 16-year-old honor student an electric guitar enthusiast, and so he had a total kidney failure, and that's no good. And so far, there's $8,680 raised on that page, not including, I don't believe, the um, money that is also coming in from this album. So thank you guys so much. I encourage you to go buy that album. It's an amazing album, and you get to help uh, out John. So that's some really cool stuff. Uh, So much love go out to them. After that, we heard my favorite Higher Warrior song, though. Hey, hey, hey. That was Solidus Cave is the name of the song. And I love it. I Like the guitar? Yeah, sure. It's, it's great. They're, they're, they're tearing up some shreds or whatever they say in the guitar world. But did you guys hear those brass? What? Did you guys hear those brass instruments playing in the song? It was such so pumpy. Okay, I'm not. I don't have a mouth, a mouth trumpet to do such a mannerisms. Anyways, moving swiftly along, I would like to mention what we've been talking about tonight, which was Hyrule Warriors. We had a lot of great theories shared. One thing I want to mention real quick was Yasi Taru, the theory that I mentioned just before the break. Yasi Taru actually had a theory that because of this added power of Hylia into the Master Sword, that it might be what was actually used to shatter the Triforce at times. It was used perhaps by Link. Uh, with the, the assistance of Hylia to split up the Triforce of Wisdom that you see the necklace that Tetra wears in the Wind Waker. Maybe Link just stabbed the Triforce of Courage. That's why it's all shattered inside for, before the Wind Waker. Something along those lines. So an interesting theory nonetheless that the Master Sword may have been used for this. But we don't know. So I thought it was an interesting theory. A very interesting theory that I wanted to mention before we uh, went tonight. We went away. So, Hyrule Warriors, could it be in the timeline? Could it be before Low Rules? Uh, could it be before the events of Link Between Worlds and, and Low Rule and they saw those Triforce mishaps and they're like, let's just get rid of it. I'm sick of it. Could it have happened after Four Swords Adventure since all the games do seem to come from that area? Or is it it's in, in its own separate little timeline? That's the one that's most commonly uh, accepted, but have, have your way, if you will. Sia, she watches over the Triforce. She is just a monitor. She doesn't do anything special. Maybe she defends it. Maybe she does some little poofy magic on the Triforce. Maybe she reports to the castle. Who knows? Is she part of the royal family? Who knows? But we do know she's a powerful sorceress. So she was probably the right person for the job. And eventually Lana takes over when uh, when, when, when Sia goes poof. Poof. And Ganondorf is in this game, and eventually he becomes Ganon, 
We seem to think that he is the first Ganon, not the second Ganon from Four Swords Adventures. And he is defeated despite having the Triforce. How? Why the Master Sword, of course. That added power of Hylia really helped out. Does the Triforce have juice? Find out next time on Hyrule Academy. That is next Friday, 10 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We will be talking all about the Fused Shadows, not about Triforce juice. That was just a joke. We're talking about the Fused Shadows, a wonderful piece of Twilight Princess lore. I've been playing Twilight Princess on my stream over the past week, and I really want to talk about those Fused Shadows. It's going to be really fun. Also, be sure to go on over to RadioHyrule.com slash donate and throw a few rupees on into the big wallet. And it'll help fund our shows and do some crazy awesome things here on Radio Hyrule. You can email me, mc at supermcgamer.com, if you have any requests or discussion suggestions. Before I go, I want to mention that this week I will be starting, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully starting this week, my very first news show in the manner of... Zelda Weekly. It's going to be a live YouTube show, and by live, I mean it's going to be pre-recorded. You're going to watch it on YouTube. And I'm hoping it becomes a thing. No promises that it's going to become a thing this week, but I'm shooting for this week. So, uh, this coming Friday, before uh, Hyrule Academy, you'll be seeing that up on my YouTube channel, which is Super MC Gamer. So, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Anyways, thank you all for your inputs, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be with you next week for more discussions. To leave you off, we have Dragon Roost Island from the String Player Gamer, who also collaborated with Pervoskite13. I don't know how to pronounce that. Thanks for listening to Hyrule Academy, right here on Radio Hyrule, everybody. Have a good evening. 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 Evening.